Welcome back. So in the last segment, we talked about the rocket equation. The rocket equation tells us for a set value of exhaust velocity, determined by your choice of rocket, we have to make trade-offs between the speed that we can reach, that delta V, and the amount of payload that we can bring. And I ended the segment by saying that this equation doesn't give us very much wiggle room, especially when you're launching a satellite from Earth. So looking at this equation, we can consider each term and figure out where like maybe we can do a little bit of improvement. So the first place you might want to push on is increasing the exhaust velocity. The graph I showed last segment giving the exhaust velocity for various combinations of fuel and oxidizer was a result of a huge amount of development over very many decades. And while there's still ongoing research to improve exhaust velocity, especially to make rocket fuel both greener and cheaper to produce, it's unlikely there's going to be a breakthrough which significantly increases the exhaust velocity anytime soon. So maybe we can push on the building materials. Like, are there any lighter materials or more efficient ways of constructing a rocket to minimize its weight? And again, there's been a lot of work in this direction. Last time I talked about a soda can, and I said that a soda can at 94% soda and 6% can is a super efficient container. Remarkably, the external fuel tank on the space shuttle, that orangish reddish thing, does an even better job. It's 96% fuel and only 4% tank. And of course, it's carrying slightly more hazardous stuff than soda. So going back to the rocket equation, we just don't have much flexibility in any of these terms. The good news, though, is that we can be clever and improve our delta V by using rocket stages. So one way to improve that final payload mass is to use a multi-stage rocket. And the idea here is that you split your fuel, your propellants, into two or more tanks. And as you launch your rocket, you use up all the propellants in the first tank, and then you get rid of it. That is, you jettison the empty tank to reduce weight and continue burning propellants in the second tank. And each of these separate tanks are called stages. For each stage, you need some kind of mechanism to jettison that empty tank. Usually it's a small explosive bolt. And you might ask, well, wow, why would you do this? This adds complication, it adds risk. Now you have to worry about not only launching your rocket, but you have to worry about whether that empty tank is gonna properly detach and eject. The increase is so large that it's worth the extra complication that comes with each added stage. So we don't use the equivalent of rocket stages for cars or airplanes because we're just not nearly as concerned with weight. You know all like that extra junk in your car, especially the really heavy thing in your trunk? Um, you'd get better gas mileage if you took it out, but the gain is so small, small, it's just not something that we think about. For rockets, every ounce matters. Rocket staging is a clever way to claw more payload out of the icy grasp of the rocket equation. And what we'll do is split the rocket equation for each stage. We calculate the delta V for the first stage, then discard the empty first stage gas tank, that extra weight. We can then calculate delta V for the second stage, but starting at that slightly reduced weight. And what's cool is that we can add these two together to get our final delta V. So let me walk you through an example of rocket staging. For this example, I've made up some numbers. So I've chosen these numbers so that it's easier to see what's going on. We'll have an optional material at the end of this module we'll, we're, where we will go through some real life numbers, maybe. Um, so for the moment, just stay with me for a little bit of math and I think you'll be able to see the power of rocket staging. Okay, so suppose I have a rocket that has a total mass of 100. We'll use 100 kilograms, but it could also be 100,000 kilograms. The true payload will be 10% of the total, or 10 kilograms. That's the stuff I actually want to get into orbit. We'll set the exhaust velocity at a constant 2.5 kilometers a second. First, we'll consider a rocket with no fancy staging, a single stage to orbit example. My propellants, so that's the fuel I need to launch, will be 80% of my total, or 80 kilograms. The remaining 10% or 10 kilograms is the fuel tank, so that's the physical structure I need to hold the fuel. We can calculate delta V for this situation using the rocket equation. So delta V is equal to 2.5 kilometers a second times that natural logarithm, 100 over 20. So 100 is the initial mass on the launch pad, 20 is that initial mass of 100 minus the 80 kilograms of fuel that I've burned through. 
My final mass consists of both the 10 kilograms of payload plus the 10 kilograms of empty fuel tank. If I calculate delta V, I get four kilometers for this one stage rocket. Okay, so let's do this again. But now we're gonna add a second stage. What I'm gonna do is split my propellants in half. I will still have 10 kilograms payload. I will still have 80 kilograms of fuel, but this time I'll split it, my fuel into two, 40 and 40 in each tank. And each tank will have five kilograms structure. You might argue that if I split my fuel, I might need to increase the weight of each tank a little bit, but that's small enough to ignore for this example. So next, let me calculate the delta V from each stage and add them together. So for the first stage, delta V equals two and a half kilometers times that natural logarithm of 100 over 60. 100 is the initial mass on the launch pad, and 60 is the initial mass of 100 minus the 40 kilograms of fuel that I burned through in the first stage. Okay, plug and chug these numbers, I get 1.3 kilometers a second. Not very impressive. Now I jettison the empty fuel tank. That is, I get rid of those five kilograms of empty fuel tank and start burning fuel in the second tank. I can do the rocket equation again, but this time my initial mass is where I ended on the last burn 60 minus that five kilograms of fuel tank that we just tossed away, so 55. The rocket equation for the second burn is delta V is equal to two and a half kilometers a second times a natural logarithm of 55. So again, the mass at the end of the last burn minus my five kilogram tank. And the final mass is 15. So it's 55 minus the 40 kilograms of fuel that I have burned. So 55 minus 40 is 15. 15 is the payload plus the second empty tank. Plug and chug these numbers, three and a half, or 3.2 kilometers a second. Again, not very impressive, but now I can add those two numbers together. I started on the launch pad at zero kilometers a second at rest. I gained 1.3 kilometers a second in that first stage and 3.2 kilometers a second in the second. Adding them together, I get four and a half kilometers a second. So that's half a kilometer we've gained by just adding rocket staging. That's huge. That's a thousand miles an hour we just added by getting rid of 5% of my mass partway through launch. Rocket staging is absolutely critical to getting into orbit with more than just the shirt on your back and nothing else, like not even you, just the shirt. Typical rockets use two or three stages to get to orbit or beyond. For example, the space shuttle used three rocket stages to get to orbit. The solid white booster rockets on either side of the shuttle exhausted their fuel after about two mi minutes after liftoff and separated with parachutes. And after roughly eight minutes after launch, that big red-orange tank ran out of liquid propellants and was also ejected. Finally, there was some fuel in the space shuttle body itself, which it used to achieve its final orbit and do any maneuvers during the mission. Let's say we want to go to Pluto. Our final velocity must be much higher than the escape velocity of the Earth. To achieve that higher delta V, the New Horizons mission to Pluto used three-stage rocket. The first stage burned through and then was discarded. The second stage burned through and was discarded. The third stage burned through and was then discarded. What actually made it to Pluto was just the little payload at the top of the rocket. That payload was far less than a percent of the original launch mass. So even with rocket staging, the rocket equation is brutal. And you might ask, what happens to all of these discarded stages? In the past, some of what was discarded was recovered and reused. So for example, the space shuttle recovered and reused those solid boosters, but it took months to get ready for the next flight. In many cases, the rocket stages are jettisoned into the ocean and are just left as garbage. A key innovation from SpaceX was that their discarded first stage rocket itself has its own mini rocket. And after separation, the first stage flips around and uses this mini rocket to decelerate and land back on a different launch pad. By landing this rocket stage, rather than letting it hit the ground or the water, it can be recovered and reused very quickly. And SpaceX is regularly landing their first stage Falcon 9 rockets and reusing them on a new rocket launch within days, which is pretty impressive. All rockets launched from Earth use two or more stages to get to their destination. In other words, there's never been, so far, a single stage to orbit launch. Typical rockets have two or three stages from Earth. 
As a final thought, you might also ask, what's the maximum number of stages that has ever been launched? Or at what point is it no longer beneficial to have multiple stages? Again, most rockets launch with two or three stages. There's a handful of rockets that have launched with four distinct stages. And there are rare cases of rockets launching with five stages, but that's about it. In the next segment, we'll talk about two final tricks to increase delta V in the rocket equation.